I've been involved with hunting and conservation for the last nearly 20 years. We had been hunting with dogs, we'd been using dogs for blood trailing, following up wounded animals, and thought, well, you know, maybe we can put this into use um, on the anti-poaching front. And that's what we did. Um, we started off with four half-bred Malinois type of dogs, and we had some great success. And then from there, it just grew and grew. So now what we do in Zimbabwe is we breed, source, and train dogs here in Zimbabwe and supply them to anti-poaching units around the country. The dogs we use are not limited to, but they are Dutch Shepherds, Belgian Shepherds, and then for tracking we started using Blue Tick Hounds. We also do detection work, so dogs that are trained to find certain substances, mainly involved with wildlife crime, like bushmeat, ammunition, firearms, that type of thing. And the tracking dogs are all imprinted on human scent, so they will track people. Then we have also have apprehension dogs, which will then tackle the person and, 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 and arrest them. You know, a lot of people say, oh, our dogs are very aggressive and you know they just they just want to bite people because they're aggressive and it's not the case we call it a controlled aggression so we can turn the dog on and off we can get it to do what we want to have an aggressive dog is no use to us we want a dog that we can communicate with we want a dog that will listen to us even when he's fighting someone so Athos here is very focused on talent who's going to be our poacher if my dog's not under control he's no use to me you know he needs to listen to come on my commands he needs to be able to react to my commands he also needs to be able to react to the, to the situation in case I can't give a command. The bond between handler and dog is very important and so we need to have control over the dogs all the time. So I'm going to give him his command to attack. Good boy Athosie! Get him boy! Get him boy! Athos out! Heal! Heal! Hey! Down. So although the dog's gone from an intense situation, tackling the guy, he's now able to be recalled back, okay? I'm now moving forward to effect the arrest, okay? We check the guy for any weapons, we turn him around, we make sure that nothing's happening, we check that everything's safe, then he breaks from us, the dog can then tackle him. So we practice all these scenarios, it's things that we have to do before the dogs get active in the field and we try and replicate as many real world scenarios as we can in the training. People always talk about the, the bond between the handler and the dog and that's 100% true, there's a great bond there. The dog really wants to please the handler, um, the handler really relies on the dog. So on the training methods, everything revolves around play for the dogs, we channel those drives into what we want them to do and they really enjoy doing what it is that they do. So whether it's tracking, apprehension, detection, it's all a game for them and they really, really enjoy it. Take Action Trust is a non-profit organisation and what we do is we donate the dogs onto other anti-poaching units. The reason for that is most anti-poaching budgets are already on a shoestring. They are really strained, um, trying to get boots on the ground, trying to get the support to the rangers. The amount of time and effort that goes into the dogs and the number of man hours is huge. The value of the dog is very high. So what we decided to do is instead of asking for money from the anti-poaching unit, we will donate the dog to them. We rely then on funding and other initiatives to generate the funds in order to train the dogs. One of the initiatives we're working on in order to, to raise funds is to allow people to come and join us while we're doing the training and be part of the process. Learn about dog training, learn about the environment where the dogs work, um, learn about the ranges that are, are protecting our animals. They will be paying guests that will come out and all those funds will then go into the program to help provide more dogs for other areas. The guys that are participating, they'll be able to leave with an accredited certification to say that they have done some dog handling training and it'll be great for the people who are involved with the dogs to be able to follow the progress of the dogs through. They'll be very involved with socialising the dogs, taking them into all the environments that they'll be working in and really be part of conservation and part of anti-poaching and be able to contribute directly towards the wildlife protection. The more support we get, the more we can do. Our plan is to try and get as many dogs into areas of need as possible. We do that by doing all the training in-house, then training the handlers. What's amazing is the bond between the handlers and the dogs. Ian Chuma has been with us now 10 years, the same as, as Talent Ngube. They're very committed to what they're doing. 
they're great handlers as well as trainers and they're also very committed to the cause they've all worked in the field extensively and they've made numbers of arrests they've been in some very hair raising situations and they're still very committed it's all a team effort on the backs of our shirts it says together as one as an organization we try to work with as many like-minded organizations where we can help each other we've got dogs around zimbabwe in the southern region where there are some of the largest populations of rhino and we have had some great successes on rhino poaching the dogs really come into their own where normal tracking methods fail in areas where there's a lot of ground cover where tracks can't be seen easily the dogs really are able to track very well in those conditions likewise at night when visual tracking can't work scent tracking is perfect cold temperatures keep the scent in and the dogs can track really well at night um, which means we can then run operations when historically we couldn't we didn't have to wait till sunrise to to start tracking Another huge advantage with the dogs is the, obviously their endurance. Pet owners know to make a dog tired is extremely difficult. We're using that to our advantage. We've now started pairing dogs and horses together and the program is in its trial stage but do, going very well. So what we're doing is putting GPS collars on the dogs. They are free running on the track, no leashes. The handlers are actually on horseback and they're covering distances very quickly and over large distances they are having a huge positive effect. The dogs to be free running is great and in areas where you don't have air support the horses can now take over that role because the handlers can now keep up with the dogs on horseback and able to cover the ground really really quickly. It's a system that we're trialing at the moment. It's working pretty well. As with everything, we, we're figuring out all the glitches. But for now, it's looking very, very positive. Over the past eight or nine years of having the trust active, we've had some great successes. Unfortunately, with success, we've also had some loss. And last year, we lost one of our, our main dogs, Achilles. And he was actually killed by a poacher while protecting his handler. Achilles was hit with the machete so hard that it broke his back. And if that had been a human, it would have done the same thing. And if Achilles had not been there, the outcome might have been very different for actually the ranger that was involved. It was a great loss to us as he was uh, an excellent dog and a really good companion and friend. The guys do have their lives on the line and, and it's sort of become a catchphrase, but that is the reality of what's going on and what we are facing. So although we do have huge amounts of success, we also have some tragedy and that's stuff that we have to live with as well. So after the loss of our dog Achilles, we engaged with a company called War Dog Tactical in South Africa. We started working on some protection for the dogs, mainly to prevent hacking and stabbing. So they came back to us with this great vest. Inside here is a Kevlar inserts as well as carbon fiber. It's quite heavy, but when we know the dogs are going into a possible combative situation, we put the vest on them. They are stab proof and we put the protection all the way down to by their tailbone. Um, every single one is custom made for the particular dogs to try and stop them getting injured while they're on duty. Most of the people they're apprehending on the meat poaching side will all be carrying spears or knives or machetes and this really will go a long way to help protect the dogs while they're doing their, their duties.